Today we're going to service a GP suspension 25mm fork kit. This fork kit is actually in my VFR 400 race bike. So, no matter what bike this kit is in, the process is going to be the same. So, step number one, how much preload do you have? Let's see. One, two, three. So we'll set that off the stop. Now we need the fork cap tool. This is an Olin's tool that works for their 25 millimeter kit. Slot that in. Then we'll loosen the cap. Okay. Now we'll fully unscrew the cap. You'll hear it click. That means the thread is done, the cap is free. So we can put the tool down. I'm going to hold it, reduce the vise, and then slide the outer tube down. And hold the fork again with the vise. Next, we have to separate this assembly from itself. In most aftermarket kits, but not all, you're going to need two wrenches, a 14 and a 19. You need to check what you have, but Olin's is a standard 19 down here on the neck of the rebound rod, and then a 14 for the preload adjuster. Obviously, all depends on what you have. So, before you start this process, make sure you have the right tools. The spacer at the top of the spring that preloads it is slotted so we can slip our 19 right in. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the cap by turning it counterclockwise away from the jam nut. And away it comes. Take the cap off. Now you'll find with most aftermarket setups, the spacer will keep the 19 millimeter wrench or whatever your wrench is, captive because there's a lot of tension on it. So now we need to remove the tension. So we'll use our bleed rod tool, we'll lift it up and we'll slide straight out. That way you don't ever bend or damage the spacer on top of the spring. Go ahead, remove the spacer. Be careful with the spring because it's covered in oil. Give it a little shake. Take it out and set it down. Then go ahead and remove the rebound rod. We're done with that. And we'll set that down. So now spring, spacer and cap are off. Next we're going to pour out the oil. Finger over the tube. Covering also the end. So sometimes there's a spacer in here that sits beneath the spring. So we've got to be careful. So let's pour the oil out. There's the spacer. Okay, so let's stop there. Grab that spacer real quick. Let that drip. Put that in our drip tray. Now we know nothing else is coming out, we can continue to pour out. And we'll stand the fork up. Pump it a couple times. Continue that process until the fork is completely empty of oil. And now we're down to drips. Now I'd much rather see the quality of the oil that came out and all the debris that's in it and there was a lot from just six hours because a spring when it's compressed bows, it doesn't hold its shape and then when it relaxes it bows again so if you were to let this bottom half settle over a week you find a shocking amount of metal debris in it. We have 250 cc's of Maxima 5 weight oil in there. So I'm going to throw this away into our oil container which will be recycled later and then replace it once it's clean with 250 cc's of oil and then we'll go ahead and put it back in the fork. 
So now we'll do this reasonably carefully. So 250 cc's. This time our maxima is clear. Coming up on it and it's right there. Now when you slow pour it you don't get a ton of air in it. So it's much better to do it that way and that way you don't have big air bubbles that take a while to percolate out. Those who drink Guinness or beer like that that has nitrogen in it, the cascade effect makes sense. You don't want a cascade effect in oil. Otherwise you've got to wait for ages for all those bubbles to go out before you perfectly set your oil level. Now when you pour the oil in, you can't pour quickly. And you have to take your time. And before you start, you've got to remember how everything assembled. So what was in the bottom of our fork that needs to go in first before this? Yep. Our preload spacer. So that goes in first. Now we'll slowly pull the oil in and keep your eye on this because if you don't watch it, it goes all over the place and you've got to start all over again. So right now it's right at the top and I've barely poured half of it in. So you want to wait, let the air bubbles come up, let the oil drop and top it off again. And the good thing is to let the air come out by itself. And this should be our last pour next. Lots of air bubbles. So you can see if I am being paying attention here, oil would have gone everywhere. Okay, so that's all our oil in there that we took out by volume. Now we'll just wait for it to sit, get its air bubbles in and out, and then we should be ready to go to bleed it. Let's go ahead and install our bleed rod onto the rebound rod. Okay, now we want to be able to lift gently up and down to try and encourage air out of the cartridge. So bring it up and just let it drop. And then it's some short strokes and a little longer stroke. And if it won't bleed out, which it won't right now, we always have the added option. Let's close our oil up so we don't spill it. Of putting the cap back on. So let's try that. Screw it down till it nudges right up against the jam nut because that's fixed in place and then do the same thing bringing it up and down and when there's air in the cartridge there's no resistance as you get the cartridge bleeding then obviously it's sucking oil not air so you may have to do this for a little while for it to bleed out properly so be patient. Took a while and sometimes it's annoying how long it takes but with the cap on we got it to bleed. What does that mean? Well to pull up you've got resistance. When you get to the top and let it go you have resistance with it all going through the cartridge itself. So up should be nice and tight top it out let it go. When you reach this point, everything is bled out correctly, not an issue. We know the oil volume was exactly what we took out, so we don't even need to check oil level. So now we can shift to reassembly, and that's going to be quick. Spring, spacer, 19, pull it up, line it up.
take the rebound rod holder off. Little dab of grease for the rod itself. And then screw the cap on. Now the spacer has a recessed groove in it, so you've got to make sure the spacer sits correctly with the cap. There it goes. Okay, that's tight. Now, on aftermarket caps like this, generally you don't have to mess with the hydraulic adjusters. So, snug that up. Our fork is now reassembled, bled. Last thing for me that's very important, which makes things really easy later, a little bit of grease on the threads. That also helps the upper o-ring stay lubricated. Now that that's done, set the fork back up in our vise, turn the cap backwards, click, now we can screw it in. Let's cover the grease up, get our tool, Nugget, and that's your full coil service on a GPE suspension 25mm kit. Mm -hmm.